Hello guys, welcome to another video here at the We Are No Code channel. My name is Kyle, I'm the Chief No Code Officer here at We Are No Code. And today, in this video, I'm gonna talk about a research that was made last year about no code, about the no code space. And there are a lot of very interesting sites from this survey. So that's why I wanted to record this video to share this information with you guys. So let's do it right now. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to also leave a thumbs up on the video and also subscribe to the channel. That's very important. So this research was made last year, 2022. And as we begin 2023, I think it's important to look a little bit into the past and then take information from what happened last year to kind of see what is going to happen this year. By the way, this year has a lot of potential in the no-code space. No-code tools are still growing, evolving. Uh, the no-code market is still booming. So lots of great things happening in the no-code space. So that's why I think starting the year with this kind of information might help a lot. So the research that I want to share with you guys today is called No-Code Trends Report. It was made by Doc Williams, uh, Mohamed, Sabrina, and it was sponsored by the University of Calgary. So thanks guys for doing such a great job gathering information, collecting data from other no-coders out there. I think this is really helpful. Uh, I remember also a survey that was built, um, was done by uh, Bubble a few years ago that was also very interesting. So yeah, it's really nice that we have um, researches like that so we can understand a little bit more about what is going on in the no-code space. It is important to say also that this is just one survey and that not everything here actually reflects the entirety of the no-code market or the no-code space because probably there were just a few people answering the survey. This doesn't disqualify the survey, but also it's important to understand that not all data here might be 100% accurate talking about the large scale, the global scale of the no-code space. But it for sure uh, brings a lot of great insights and information that I think is very relevant. So that's why I wanted to share this with you guys in this video. So let's talk about the key findings from this research. I'm going to first present the numbers, talk a little bit about the numbers, and then I'm going to give you guys my personal and professional opinion about the research results. Okay, so let's go. The first key finding is that most respondents identify themselves as entrepreneurs. That's really interesting. So what does it mean? It means that all people responding this survey, they had options to choose from in which way they label themselves. And most of people label themselves as entrepreneurs. So 45% of people call themselves as entrepreneurs. So people using no code tools to build a business, to build something relates to the word entrepreneur. But there are also other labels and uh, some of them call themselves builders no coders or creators. Um, I've also seen people calling uh, themselves as makers when using no code tools, but that's a very interesting insight. So most people using no code call themselves entrepreneurs. Now let's go and see the second key insight. Almost half of the people responding the survey stated that they never made a sale using no code. As we can see, 50%, 50.7% 50 of the people responding this survey said that they, yes, they made a sale using no code. And 49.3%, which is almost half, said that they didn't make any sale using no code tools. Now, that's a key insight. That's a very interesting insight, which, in my opinion, means two things. One, the first thing is that most people creating things with no code right now, they might still be at the very early stage. So they are not yet at the moment where they are actually trying to sell. They are still trying to build things. So that's why they never made a sale. Most people m might be not even uh, ready to launch their product idea yet. And another thing that I also see is that 
maybe a lot of people uh, might be giving up uh, in the middle of the process or they struggle uh, in the sales process. Like they might be able to build things, they might be able to even launch their ideas, but they are not yet making sales. That could be um, for a number of reasons. It could be they didn't uh, think about a real problem, so they're trying to sell something that no one wants to buy. That might be lack of investment to get sales, um, sales, lack of sales skills as well, poor advertisement. So it's uh, interesting to see that, yeah, like half of the people are being able to make sales and generate revenue, but another half of these guys are not being able to sell. And yes, that's a reality because of multiple reasons. It's not just because of the no code part. I would say even if you build something using code, you will face pretty much the same challenges as well to make your first sale. So that's why we say no code alone by itself is not enough. So yes, it is important that you leverage no code and all the powerful things that no code can bring you, but that alone it itself is not enough. So you have to merge no code with startup skills, entrepreneurship skills, sales, and many, many other factors to actually be successful. But that's a key insight that's very interesting. So another insight is the industries no coders work in. So as we can see, most no coders are still working in the technology space. We have here uh, in the second place other, which might be a combination of multiple sectors. Uh, and then education. So technology, education, and then we have hobby, special interests, finance, Web3, manufacturing, nonprofit, and government as well. So yes, primarily people using no code are still the people who are very close to technology. Probably this is because no code is still very early stage for most people, like for the broad mass. So that insight I really agree with, and I think no code is still very early stage. Most of people around the globe don't know about no code and people who know about no code might be closer to the technology industry to the technology space so that's why i think this number uh is revealing that because yeah it's most likely that people working in tech are uh, hearing about no code for the first time or already uh, adopted no code but most people in other areas are still not even aware that no code tools uh, exist. So I agree with that number. So no surprise here, but let's see how this is gonna evolve over the years because that's gonna be very interesting to see. Going to the next one now, uh, skill level. So how uh, the respondents uh, judge themselves in terms of skill level, uh, in which level do they think they are in terms of using no code tools? So as we can see, most people answering this survey call themselves ex experts uh, and no code experts, 46.1%. Uh, some other people intermediate and then beginners. As we can see here, like for example, this number, 46% of people being experts and then 15% beginners and intermediate people, 38%. If we combine this number here, we can see why the 50% of people not making sales yet. Like if we have only like about half of people here uh, that actually are experts and the other part is like intermediate and beginners, that explains a lot why people are not yet making sales because they are still learning. They are still at early stage at their no code game. So that could explain a little bit about the previous uh, insight that we saw. And that's also interesting. We have a lot of people that are experts already, but way more people, not way more people, but like we have a very uh, good amount of people that are still very early stage or intermediate. So that might change over time. We will see more and more no code experts, but we could see also a lot of people in the beginning stage at the beginning stage as well, because as no code grows, more people will be 
uh, interested about no code and joining uh, the no code space for the first time. So very interesting to see um, this key insight as well. Now let's go to the next one. The next one is uh, what is your main goal using no code tools? So let's see here. We have uh, the majority of people saying that they want to create a brand or company. So that's pretty accurate, I would say, because if most of people responding this uh, research called uh, themselves entrepreneurs, their main goal is basically building a company. And so that's why this is the bigger, uh, bigger amount of people here. And uh, in second place, we can see people trying to create a full-time SaaS everyone trying to create recurring revenue. So that's why SaaS is also booming and it's very close to, um, to no code and a lot of people using no code to build SaaS products as well. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's you or if you are, uh, this kind of people here, which one of you are you, uh, let me know in the comment section. Uh, let's see what else people trying to create side projects using no code tools. Becoming a freelancer, that's, I would say, that would be, should be at least, well, that's, the number is a little bit lower because I think most of people that answered this uh, research, this survey, called themselves as um, entrepreneurs. But, like, I believe that there are lots, uh, there is a lot of people out there uh, that are using no code as a way to become a freelancer, uh, no code developer. So, that's another interesting um, area you could um, potentially go for. Uh, what else? Getting a job at a company with my no code skills. I think that's also will go. Um, this is going to increase over the years. That's still very early stage. Why? Because not all the companies are uh, hiring no coders, uh, specifically no coders uh, for specific purposes or building no code. Um, departments inside their, inside their companies, but that I think will start to happen. Um, maybe this year, maybe next year, it will increase. So these two things here, I think will grow other and then creating no code platform. That's interesting as well. I'm curious to understand what do they mean by no code platform? Are they trying to actually build new no code tools? Um, that's, that's interesting as well. Uh, so yeah, very nice. I would say like these guys here, uh, on this side, creating a company, creating a full time SaaS. I could group them, um, uh, in one single group, because I think the only difference here is like the fact that here it is saying SaaS and here is not saying anything. So to me, like building a company and building a SaaS could be the same because at the end of the day, both are trying to build companies and are uh, entrepreneurs. So I would say we could combine this data here. And this one is more for the like people who are trying to work as no code developers, freelancers, and here people trying to still uh, be on a nine to five position, but using no code for that and working inside companies with no code. That's really interesting. And of course, a lot of people trying to create side projects. The side project part, I would say is like, yeah, I'm still happy with my job, but um, I want to build something on a side. Uh, some of these people building things on a the side, they might be looking to transition to a full time uh, entrepreneurship uh, position. So they want to build something small at first and then if that grows they quit their their job and then become a full-time entrepreneur so very related i would see those three uh answers here uh, but somehow they they decided to to ask them in a different way so that's why people are splitting between options here but very interesting insight let's see the next one so this one I think is very interesting and I have a lot of opinions about that, but let's see this uh, information first. So most common problem using no code people. So what are the biggest problems people are facing when using no code? 
uh, no code tools. So of course this is a very uh, limited uh, number uh, of information in terms of the research because like we are just getting answers from people who are actually answering this research. But let's try to interpret this the better way uh, possible. So the main complaint about using no code tools from these guys is that there are not enough features. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. The other uh, complaint is that it's too expensive, then too complicated and lack of integrations. And we have other here. I would be very curious to know what is the other uh, in more details uh, to like know what people are talking about it, but we don't have this data. But okay, let's talk a little bit about these numbers and what they could mean. Not enough features, not enough features. So. Remember that we saw most of people answering this survey, they called themselves um, experts. I would say half people, half of the people called themselves experts and then the other half are intermediate and beginners. I would combine them in a single group and then we have half and half. So the reason they might be saying not enough features is one, probably these experts are reaching the limitations because they are trying to build something that is very complex. And as they are experts, they're trying to push the boundaries of what's possible with no code. That might be one reason. And the other reason that I would say is more related to the beginners or to the intermediate folks, a little bit um, related to the experts as well, but I would say more for those two first groups. Um, is that like one people think there are some limitations, but sometimes it's not about the tool itself, but themselves, like because they don't know how to do the things they want to do in the, the no code tool. So they think, oh, the tool is limited, but it's not about the tool itself is about them. Like they don't know how to build what they want to build using the tool. So it's not really. Uh, a real limitation it's like a limitation belief and the second thing that i would say is that people most of the times even like first time entrepreneurs people getting started in the no code space intermediate uh, and beginners they envision things that are very complex at first so they think oh I want to build my startup and then I need this feature, 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 and that feature, and that other feature, and that other feature. So they think they need a lot of features and usually complex features. They don't know if the feature is complex or not. So in their mind, like, oh, no code, easy to do everything. But in fact, that's not exactly like that. Depending on the feature you want to add to your app, it is a complex feature, even using no code tools by nature, right? So they think everything is easy. Everything is possible. They need everything inside their tools, their applications at first. And that's a big risk, like even with code, it's not about no code, it's about like product. Uh, it's like about building products that people want, features that people want. So usually that's a very common mistake. So people come with their mindset totally wrong about how to use and go about building startups and using no code tools. So they reach uh, these lim limitations that are limitations that maybe they don't even need to have. Like just because the fact that their scope is totally out of uh, question, like it's out of their minds. They, they just think, oh, I need all these features. That's the perfect idea. That's the perfect scenario. When in reality, like most of the features they think they need are not needed. Most of them need to be proved, validated. They are only assumptions. And then they blame the no code tools. They want to do crazy stuff that maybe might not be needed at first. And then they reach limitations and they blame no code tools because it's easier to blame the no code tool for being limited, then reducing their scope, then doing the job right, to change their ideas, to 
change their mindset. It's way easier to blame something else than change yourself and what's wrong with you and what's wrong with your idea uh, and what should be different in your project scope. A lot of people don't go for MVPs, which is a minimum viable product. They think about the future and version of that product right away. They want to build something very big, very crazy, crazy, even though it's just the first stage of their idea, startup business, whatever. So I would say it's, I would say it's not about the no code tools being limited. Of course, there are limitations. I'm going to say, of course, there are limitations because it's real, but most of the limitations are there because people are being like that, not because the no-kutus are not capable of delivering great solutions. So it's, I would say half and half, like half could be considered real limitations and half could be things that people don't actually need and, and, and then it's just a matter of bypassing the limitations in a smart way. Now, lack of integrations, okay, who like, who is trying to do what and what are the actual limitations in terms of integrations? Why are people trying to integrate things that are not compatible? Maybe they'll know how to do the integration. So again, a little bit, I don't know. It, I, I would like to understand in more details what they are complaining about. Too complicated, I understand. For some people, it might be complicated because they are non-technical um, or simply because people don't uh, put enough effort to first understand how the tool works. They don't go and find um, ways to educate themselves about the no-code tools. One of the big, big, big mistakes most people do is like, okay, I heard about no-code. I heard about what tool I could potentially use. They go just jump straight into the no-code tool and try to build something. And I would say that can work like that might work for some people but it's most likely that you're gonna get stuck just because like it's not about the no code tool being difficult it's about like hey you want to do something new that you've never done before you need to learn how to do that before plan ahead before you go into the building process like are you gonna try to build a house without pre-planning everything you need to build like are you gonna just go and then start building from scratch no, right? So that's going to for sure lead you to fa failure, right? So so we have to like be a little bit more prepared, organized, learn stuff before we jump into the building phase. And because a lot of people skip a lot of steps, they might say, oh, it's complicated. Well, and also it's complicated when you are trying to build things that are way beyond your skill level, like you are a beginner intermediate uh, trying to build complex stuff. Of course, you're going to say it's too complicated, right? So you have to be aware of these things. Too expensive, I would say I love that because like a lot of people complain that local tools are expensive. Why? Because they are building ideas that probably are not actually real businesses. They are just at their early stages, like trying to build something that might not stick, like when they launch into the market and they don't want to invest. And to be honest, like if you are building a business, if you want to become an entrepreneur, you have to prepare yourself financially. You have to save money to invest in this new company. And to be honest, a lot of people jumping into the no code space, they are just like, trying to be um, cheap about this. Like they don't want to invest anything in no code tools. They don't want to pay for the tools. They're always trying to save money when they actually should be paying for the tools to make their uh, progress happen. So there's no way to build a business from scratch for free. Like it's, it's going to require you to invest time, money, energy, and that's the way it is. So. If like I see that a lot of people, they jump into the no code space trying to hack this, like, oh, I want to build things, but I don't want to invest a dime. I don't have money. I don't, I, I will make that happen without investment. Well, it can happen, but I would say it's not most of the cases. So 
a lot of people complain about the no-code tools being expensive because just simply because they don't have enough money they didn't prepare uh, this investment enough to to go and actually build a company so one way to face this in a different um, with a different mindset would be like okay if you were going to hire people to work for you to build everything uh, all the things that no code could replace like hiring agencies everything and then you do the calculations of like how much that would cost if you go the traditional way and how much that same uh, process would be um, would cost for you uh, if you just go with no code tools it's crazy no code tools are way cheaper but because they are comparing no code tools um, with nothing then of course they will say it is expensive and because they don't have a budget a predefined budget that they will actually burn to make sure that this company goes through and 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 succeed so they they are they don't have a found a foundation like as a, a business person would have like if you want to build a business you have to prepare yourself to do that so be financial uh, financially stable first save a little bit of money first and then you're gonna say okay during this amount of time like one year i have a budget of this x amount that i think is enough due to the calculations that i made that um, i came to the conclusion that it would be necessary to build this company and then you will start investing burning this money actually in order to make that idea happen and then at some point if you see that it's not working you can pivot you can try different ways but you have to try there is no other way so people say oh it's too expensive but like do you really have a budget like that, that allows you to build a company usually the answer is no so anything is expensive because they are not financially prepared to actually become entrepreneurs okay so that's my personal perspective about it professional perspective about it that's my opinion you may agree you may not agree but that's the way i see this um, and yeah so let's go to the next one what are they building okay so that's interesting as well so most of people building online businesses then other people building automation mvps internal tools experimenting just testing no code to just no code tools just for fun so here i can see like almost 15 percent just experimenting of course they will say it is expensive they are just trying it okay so when it's just for fun when it's not an actual business when there is no uh, business plan or preparation or when you don't do the proper job of course and anything is expensive because it's just for fun right other people building marketplaces other stuff uh, and yeah so automation i see potential in that building online businesses i also see great usage of no code tools internal tools as well growing exponentially as companies realize that they can use no code to build custom internal tools automation as well helping companies and mvps that's also great to see that now my only question is how much of these mvps are actual mvps because yeah the reality is that a lot of people say oh i'm building my mvp and in fact it is not considered an mvp it is a full build it's a full product full of features so i kind of i don't know uh like how many people answering mvps are actually like building actual mvps that's another problem we see uh in the no code space in the development space coding space as well like using actual code uh, startups in general uh in the product space like it's a common problem it's not just related to no code but that's really nice nice insight as well so most people uh, because they answer they are entrepreneurs of course they are trying to build online businesses as well that makes a lot of sense now most used platforms that was interesting to me because i see airtable and notion on top of the list and that's crazy because like airtable i know 
of course it's a, a very good tool has a big big amount of users um, it is worth billions and billions one of the most valuable no code tools out there and yeah a lot of people using our table and notion as well and notion like of course it is considered a no code tool but like it's not exactly like the other tools like bubble and webflow so interesting to see that people are using like Airtable and Notion and Zapier. Like I would say for automation, internal tools, databases, very, very, very interesting insights. And then of course, Bubble coming after those three, two, uh, those three tools. And then Webflow, uh, very close to Bubble. Of course, I understand and I agree with that, but really interesting to see that Bubble Webflow software, for example, are not at the top of the list. And also very interesting to see that Zapier is way ahead of Make. And yeah, that's that's very nice insight software. Uh, we, is one of the tools that we've been using uh, a lot lately as well. Very uh, good, very easy for, for uh, people just getting started. Make uh, as well, like a very good option uh, for automations, then Card, Glide, other, Adalo, Flutterflow. Um, I think Flutterflow is going to to go to the top of the list um, in a few uh, months, probably if if that research um, is going to be uh, made again. Uh, Builder, P Paperform, AppGyver, Coda, BuddyBase, and ShareTribe. Very interesting to see these guys. Um, so do you agree? Which tools are you guys using? Uh, of course, again, like that's not something that you should say, oh, then Airtable is the top of on the list. Let me use Airtable. It really depends what you're using, like what you're building, what you want to do. The no code tool that will be the best for you might not be the best for some other people. So don't just go and then check the, the list here and say, oh, okay, now from now on, I'm going to use our table just because it's the first one here. And remember, this was like a group of people that were um, responding this, um, this survey. So this might not be uh, the entirety of the no code uh, space if we talk about this in a global level, right? So, um, but it's very, okay. I would say I agree with like those tools being on the top of the list. Um, but I have my also my personal prefer preferences, uh, depending on the, the type of project, of course, I would use one or, or another. But yes, this is um, very accurate, I would say, not in terms of the order here, but the list makes sense. And these tools, I would say, are the ones that I also would say they are on the top of the list. I see some other missing uh, tools here that I also think could be on that list, but that's okay. That's uh, other tools that I would say also that I wouldn't consider <laughs> as much, but that's it. And also interesting to see like, for example, Notion, which is like Coda is a competitor uh, of Notion. And then it's very down below here uh, as make is down below after uh, Zapier as well. So yeah, very cool. If that tool was uh, that tool that research was made in a different way, I think the results would change as well. If they had categories, for example, oh, web builder, app, mobile app builder, automation tools, etc., then I would see this in a different way. So maybe uh, depending on how you group th these tools, then the results might change as well. So, so that's something that we should consider. And okay, that's uh, that's it. Let's see. Uh, the types of businesses run by no coders. So what kind of business uh, they are running? So most of people running freelance businesses. So that's interesting insight. Then other people doing, uh, creating SaaS businesses, then hybrid, which I don't know exactly what that means. Agencies, which I would say kind of similar to freelancers. So I could combine this into agency and freelancer. Of course, agencies are bigger than just the freelancers, but kind of providing or competing uh, in the same in the same environment, uh, which basically means uh, development services and providing 
solutions using no code tools then community and other um, interesting um, numbers um, yeah so kind of agree with that again lots of people trying to build recurring revenues uh, revenue so building SaaS businesses with no code tools so very nice and as we can see we had an, an, a very um, good number of people saying that they were uh, no code experts so that makes a lot of sense that they are providing services as freelancers and no code agencies as well now let's see the uh, number 10 the insight number 10 types of services sold by no coders so what are these guys selling uh, building apps for clients that's nice automation services cool providing SaaS uh, services courses micro SaaS so if we combine SaaS with micro SaaS of course they are different categories but kind of similar templates that's nice websites app scripts consulting list and directories and other so that's very interesting um, it seems that now this kind of part here is uh, way bigger for the professionals that were listed in the previous um, insight so agencies and and uh, freelancers primarily uh, providing apps for clients custom builds using no code and also automation services and that's why maybe Airtable and uh, Zapier Notion are on the top of the list because probably they are uh, creating automation internal tools for clients and building apps for clients so that makes a lot of sense so yeah na nice insight as well the uh, how much money they are making or they made last year so as we can see people are making a very good amount of money over 100k uh, as the top so yeah maybe half of the people uh, that answered they are not making sales are struggling with sales and the other half is making all the sales and making a lot of money so as you can see there is a huge potential in the no code space so a lot of people responding there they are making over 100k uh, a year then uh, in second 50 to 100k and then we have a little bit of a shift here uh, 20 to 50 5 to uh, 20 uh, and then 1005k so as we can see more people making from 5 to 20k than people making 1000 to 5000 um, so interesting then 500 to a thousand a hundred to five hundred and zero to a hundred okay that's interesting so we can see a lot of potential to make money um and with with no code tools being a freelancer building a company becoming a entrepreneur so very nice and well my conclusion is that this uh, survey was very good like great job guys again thanks for sharing again this was not made by we are no code uh, but i just wanted to create this video because i wanted to not only spread the word about this but also give you guys my own opinion about it my own insights on top of the research uh, results and i really like seeing these kinds of uh, research um, because it gives you a lot of insights about how the no code space is uh, what people are doing so it might be helpful for you as well so make sure to go back to the specific point if you are uh, interested in this information take your time to uh, process all the information in this video and also leave your comments down below uh, let me know what you think about the king sites your opinions if you agree if you don't agree no problem at all we are here all to learn and to grow together and understand a little bit more about the no code space if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and also like the video if you liked the content uh, that i brought here for you today and before i go i just want to uh, talk a little bit about our academy which is the we are no code academy uh, we have this environment uh, where you can learn 
no code tools you can learn entrepreneurship uh, skills as well we have multiple classes in this environment and that's a very nice way for you to get started in the no code space and learn a little bit more about how to use no code tools and about entrepreneurship as well as we can see a lot of people are struggling to make their first sale to build their product so it's very important that you invest in yourself investing knowledge and ed education so that's what we provide so you can thrive in the no code space so you can become an entrepreneur so you can build your startup so you can leverage no code tools to build your dream business idea but do it in the right way and understand all you have to do to build that business in a successful way so education is the foundation of anything and that's very important that um, you understand the foundation and you understand what is no code, you understand the tools, how to use the tools, you understand about entrepreneurship as well and startup building because not only knowing how to use no code tools will get you there. So it is also fundamental that you understand basic concepts about entrepreneurship and startup skills as well because that combined with no code can be really powerful so if you are interested in knowing more about the we are no code academy i invite you to check the link down below in the video description section take a look at the website if you have questions you can reach out and ask for more information and if you're ready to join i see you inside the we are no code academy don't forget to check our other social networks other videos we have here at the we are no code channel we have a lot of other cool videos for you to keep learning about no code tools the no code space and also check our website we are no code.com i see you in the next video thanks so much for watching and i catch you on the next one